All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA 5th edition task list series, continuing with C11, interpret graph data. So more of a continuation of C10. We're going to talk more about visual analysis and what we're looking at while interpreting our graphs. Remember, visual analysis and graphs are meant to make interpretation easy and quick so we can do it and we can explain it to our stakeholders and clients. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. All right, interpreting graphically displayed behavioral data. In other words, we put our data on a line graph, we interpret it. What is the first step in interpretation? Well, before that, we have to talk about how we interpret that, interpret data, and that is visual analysis. So we interpret graphs using visual analysis, which is simply visual inspection of the graph data, meaning we're not running complicated statistics or complicated formulas. We're using our eyes and making determinations on what we see. So first things first is we have to understand the graph. So you want to read the legend, the labels, and the condition labels. What's the behavior? What's the time? What conditions are there? You have to understand what you're looking at, what was the graph trying to convey to you? You then have to look at how the graph is scaled and formatted. So there is a standard for how a line graph should look. And you want to be cautious of any graphs that might be too elongated or too truncated to mis misrepresent what the data actually shows. You then want to interpret data paths for correctness. And in relation to the prior two steps, make all your data sure all your data paths are connected and not connected across condition change lines. You're just making sure everything looks okay. Once everything looks fine, you have a handle on the behavior, we can start interpreting the different conditions. Now, within conditions. So for example, a condition in an ABA design, condition one would be A, our baseline. Condition two would be our intervention. Condition three would be back to baseline. So we have three conditions. And we wanna first conduct visual analysis within each individual condition. So, for example, if I had a graph and it's going to look really ugly, but it's just for an example, right? And so we would have our data path, our, our data path, and our data path, okay? So we have our different conditions, and we're going to go one at a time. So first, number of data points. How many data points are reported in each condition? Now, remember, the rule of thumb is the more data points in a condition, the stronger your results may seem, meaning control is more represented if we have more data points. And that's generally the rule of thumb. There's, there, there are exception, exceptions, but that's what you're looking for. If you see a baseline with one data point, you really need to ask, well, why did you only want run baseline one time? Then we have to ask ourselves, what about the variability? Do repeated measures of the behavior lead to different outcomes? What about level? That's where the data converges on the vertical axis scale. This is usually interpreted through a mean analysis or a median analysis. And then trend, what direction is the data path taking? So let's look at each one of those individually. So first, let's look at variability, different outcomes from repeated measures, meaning if I repeat the same thing over and over again, how different is the outcome? And high variability usually indicates insufficient control of the behavior, meaning if I'm measuring the same thing over and over again, and that behavior is going all over the place, we don't have much control over it, right? There's not a big, there's not much functional relationship between what we're doing and the behavior. If you look at A, it's rather low, not much variability at all, right? The repeated measures are yielding kind of the same outcome. If you look at B, there's more variability to it, right? Different repeated, different outcomes from each measure. C and D, with C, variability starts low, but then really increases as we get further along. And D, we have a very high amount of variability. And one of the things with visual analysis is there is some subjectivity to it, right? So if you look at B, I might say, well, there's some variability, but it's not too much. Other people might look at that and say, well, that's high variability. You've just got to make your best interpretation, knowing what you know about the data and the graph. So that's variability. Now, Let's look at level. This is where data points converge, typically indicated by a mean average level line or a median level line. And the difference is a mean level line 
can be affected by outliers and anomalies. If you have a constant behavior data path like in A, and then you have data points here and here, those two data points are really going to mess up the average. So a lot of times you want to try to find the median level line. The median line is just the most typical performance. We're looking at the middle, and then we have our 50%, 50%. Now, in this case of B, C, and D, these are averages. You can see they're right in the middle. We've taken the average of the data and drawn a line. That is our level. And across conditions, you're really looking for level changes to see well, how much change have I made. So you can see the dotted lines here, or the however you want to interpret those, but I'll call them dotted lines, are our levels. And then probably the easiest one, the most common, we talk about the trend. What direction is data moving? Typically reported as increasing, decreasing, or zero. So C, we have a slightly increasing. D, we have a significant increasing. E and F are both decreasing. G and H, we don't really have a trend, right? G, we're going up, but then we go straight back down. H, we're all over the place. So all three of those combined are going to give you a really good idea of what the data has done. And that is within each condition. Now, once you have each condition, then we have to compare across conditions. And this is when we take things like our level. So if you see condition A, if, we, if this was baseline, let's just call it that, and this is intervention, and we see our level has changed pretty substantially. Well, we can say our independent variable, right, might, might have had some effect, okay? Both condition A and B are very variable, and there's not much trend, but the level did change. What about A, or uh, the second graph we, with condition A and condition B? Well, in condition A, there is some sort of trend, right? We have an upper trend here. Across conditions, our level changes, and then we have a downward trend. So again, it seems like the independent variable is affecting things in some way. In other words, as a BCBA, this is going to become second nature. You're going to look at a graph and immediately think level, variability, and trend. And then you're going to interpret it and make your determination. And then you can take that graph and very easily explain it to your stakeholders and clients. That's the beauty of line graphs and visual analysis. So that wraps up C11. Of course, as always, we'll be back next Sunday with the next step in our series. Be sure to subscribe for that next step in all of our practice exams and practice questions. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. As always, let us know when you pass. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.